this tutorial discusses critiques of the welfare state, really the main trajectories of tr critique over the past 30 or 40 years uh, that has been launched against the welfare state from different camps. Uh, and I'll start with uh, the three main positions, really. And then I'll go on to discuss uh, which one won out when we get to the 1980s, uh, which is called new public management. And then I'll uh, finish with uh, just addressing the classic critiques of new, new public management. So I mentioned there are three main critiques against the welfare state rising. Uh, and they come from feminism and from the left and the right. And I'll start with feminism here uh, because um, this is straight out of Pateman uh, discussing uh, the welfare state uh, and how it has been uh, really built on patriarchal assumptions about the divisions of labor, uh, specifically the male breadwinner model. Uh, in other words, in, in uh, many cases, uh, it's constructed on the notion that one person, in other words, the man, leaves the home, uh, earns uh, the money and comes home. And so for the woman, uh, she is uh, remains really uh, reliant on the man of the house, uh, whereas he instead has entered into a relationship uh, with the state through, for instance, employment insurance and so on. And there is a number of other examples where we can discuss how uh, this this male breadwinner model and this these kinds of patriarchal assumptions about uh, the division of labor has informed the structure of uh, the welfare state. And the result of this uh, is that that these structures continue to shape contemporary welfare state regimes and social policy. So for instance, you know, access to childcare, parental leave insurance model, senior care, uh, all these caring uh, dimensions that have traditionally uh, been the domains of uh, the care of women uh, might have not received the same attention or the same treatment, so the, the feminist argument goes, as other uh, areas of the welfare state. Going on to the left, and this is out of uh, Klaus Offe, uh, three main points really. Uh, first of all, the welfare state is ineffective and inefficient. It's ineffective and inefficient because it does not eliminate the causes for needs. And the social services are of course subject to budget constraints. So if uh, the capitalist economy doesn't work as well as one would like it to be, and of course from the left, it, it never, from the perspective of the nef left, that will never happen, uh, then uh, we can hope that we'll have social services, but we can't really be sure. Uh, and also uh, it doesn't, it, as I mentioned in the first uh, point here, it doesn't really eliminate the basic causes for needs, which of course are, are caused by, uh, so uh, the left would say, uh, the capitalist system. The second point here is that it's repressive. It exerts social control. S clients have to show that they deserve the services and benefits that they are getting from the welfare state. So there is a power relationship here between the state and the clients that should not be uh, neglected. Third, it has the effect, an ideological effect on people, uh, tricking them effectively into believing that the core problem of capitalism is solved because there is a welfare state and a safety net should capitalism uh, fail. In other words, if there should be a recession. Uh, and this is because people tend to believe that what the state does and what the dark market does is not really related to each other, so argues Offit. So uh, the combined effect of these uh, uh, three outcomes is that capitalism is actually stabilized. So uh, the welfare state doesn't reform capitalism, it stabilizes it. And that's a concern uh, that uh, left-wing scholars have had. Going to the right, uh, there is also the argument that it's ineffective and inefficient. Uh, the argument here is that it creates disincentives to work and it, it creates wasteful spending. 
The second uh, point is that it's repressive in the sense that it doesn't help the poor, it traps them in poverty. And third, uh, it's an anti-capitalist construction in the sense that it's an obstacle to the market. Uh, and that's of course related to the first point of, of creating disincentives to work. Now what I want to point out with these two positions is that there are similarities in the argument here between the left and the right. Both sides are actually talking about inefficiencies, uh, lack of effectiveness, and both sides are saying that the welfare state is repressive, that this uh, relationship between state and client uh, is in fact a power relationship uh, where the state dominates the client and maybe even disempowers the client to, to some extent. So this is something that, that is worthy to keep in mind, particularly in today's debate when we hear the left and the right discussing uh, what we should do with the welfare state. It's really interesting to note that uh, in the classic debate going on here, if we, we trace this back to the 70s and 80s, uh, there are very strong denominators between the left and right in how they view uh, the uh, the welfare state. And when it comes to, to, to these uh, couple of points here, uh, you will find that Milton Friedman, uh, for instance, was uh, argued these, these points very strongly. And that has uh, some uh, importance because, of course, in the 1980s, the laissez-faire economy became the logic of the day. And uh, that is why the triumphant response really was new public management. So the principles of new public management uh, was to decrease spending, to get more services for less money, to increase accountability, in other words, to counter wasteful spending, to introduce clearer performance indicators so we know about better uh, about what outcomes that the welfare state services actually produce, uh, and that politicians and bureaucracy should no longer interfere so much in day-to-day -day business of the welfare state, but more give guidance to frontline workers uh, so that they could do their jobs and have some flexibility uh, to uh, achieve better outcomes. The presumed outcome of that, of these principles, was to increase the efficiency by then introducing market mechanisms for public sector management, procurement, uh, making sure that, that uh, service delivery could actually be done by someone else, private companies uh, or NGOs. And this would also give greater choice to clients uh, and let service users, uh, and I quote, vote with their feet uh, by, by introducing these uh, competition mechanisms and many different service delivery uh, agents that the clients could pick and choose from. So this is what we call public-private partnerships when the state funds service delivery that is actually carried out by someone else through a contract arrangement. Now, uh, since the past 20 or so years that this, this uh, framework has been used in all sorts of countries uh, over the world, New Zealand classically, but also uh, the US, Canada, uh, the UK, and so on, uh, many countries, including uh, in Scandinavia to some extent, uh, there have been a lot of critique against new public management. Uh, from the left, we can note that uh, many commentators observe how the state has been rolled back because it's no longer actually doing the service delivery. Uh, it's doing less than before. Uh, these uh, uh, scholars, these commenters would also say that uh, rolling the state back means undermining social rights. Uh, and they would also say that uh, poverty has an increase has increased and th this is related to what's called uh, workfare schemes and a workfare scheme is when someone on social assistance in other words not even qualifying for employment insurance someone on social assistance has to actually work in order to get their welfare uh, which is of course uh, contrary to the principle of social rights uh, where getting social assistance is a right, not something you have to work for to get. Uh, and uh, that these workfare schemes actually do um, increase the, the problems uh, associated to poverty. So that's um, the critique from the left. Uh, I could also add here, I've added two, two points from, that's not strictly related to the left, but also observations that have been made. And that is that, um, 
the accountability that was supposed to get stronger from new public management really has not increased. Uh, and that the performance indicators that are used to measure outcomes uh, are really not terribly clear all the times. Uh, so uh, whether or not new public management really has been a success uh, can certainly still be up for debate. So that summarizes uh, the main points in the critique of the welfare state over the past few decades.